Hey guys, so uh, what we're going to be doing is touching on each of the nine uh, blues clues, as I call them. Um, a lot of these videos might be short and sweet because there's not much more to say than the obvious. And in this particular case, the first blues clue that I've listed is uh, the dominant seven as one chord, the five seven as the one seven. Now, wait a second, what's all this? Why five becoming one? That doesn't make sense. Generally speaking, all right, uh, let me clarify this one five business a bit. Generally speaking, um, let's say you're in one of the Greek modes, okay? Let's say D Dorian, which is the key of C, and you're uh, pretty much rooting on a D minor chord in the key of C. That would be a lowercase one in that case. Even though it's from the key of C, right, which it makes it a two, D is two in the key of C, uh, when you root a chord, the tendency is to refer to that root chord as one. So therefore, we have the 5-7 chord in the key of C sitting at the fifth step. But when it becomes rooted, then you call it a one dominant seven. Okay, I hope that makes some sense. Uh, there's not much more than that. I mean, this is, this is the same, you know, I, I talked about relative versus parallel. Relative and parallel are extremely important concepts in music. And when we when we go 5-7 and call it 1-7, what we're doing is actually a parallel move, believe it or not, even though we're dealing with numbers. But let's think about it. If 5-7 was acting as the root chord uh, and uh, we wanted to make it relative to the key it's from, which is the key of C, um, well, G7, we're, we're going to use as an example. G7 is the 5 chord in the key of C, okay? Um if I refer to that as its name, 5-7, five, 5-dominant five dominant seven chord, uh, that's relative because we're talking about relative to the key of C. It, the key of C is the predominating key from which this chord arises. However, when you make that dominant seven a one, uh, when you make it the root chord, in other words, of a progression, as in the blues, uh, <laughs> When that becomes a one, uh, then you're actually going parallel because in a sense, in a kind of sense, you're stating another key, especially when it comes to the blues, because actually the whole concept of key goes down the tubes with the blues. Um, at least the, the, the concept of key in terms of the uh, major minor key system. Um, all right. So in any case, what we're talking about here is the five seven becomes the root chord in a progression. All right. Now, uh, once again, I want to go through the three steps of history, the Greek modes, the uh, major minor key system, and finally the blue system, how each of those systems relates to one of the three chord types, major, minor, and seventh. In uh, the Greek modes, I I've talked about this before, but, so, but bear with me. This is important stuff. In the first system, the Greek modes, G7, the 5, 7, can only go to one place, back to the C chord, which is one. And the C chord is a major chord. So that dominant seven is pointing to a major chord. Therefore, we can refer to the isolated key system, the Greek modes, as being major based, major key based. All right. When we go to the major minor key system, all of the tweakery that happened and changes happened only on the minor chord, the minor key of the sixth step of, of the key we were in. In the key of C, that'd be C, e, uh, C D, E, F, G, A, one, two, three, four, five, six. A minor is a key, and and how they tweaked uh, the key of A minor was to raise the seventh step a half step, and then eventually to raise the sixth step as well. All the tweakery happened on the minor chord, and that's what gave us uh, secondary dominant possibilities um, in the key of G, and I go B7 to A, E minor. That change right there is definitely related to minor keys. Point being that all the changes in this in the major minor key system, the um, system I call interactive keys, uh, all the tweakery happened on the minor uh, scale. So therefore, we could say this is a minor bass system. So the Greek modes is a major bass. The uh, major minor key system is minor based. And finally, when we get to the blues, it becomes dominant seventh based. All right. So we have the three chord types: major, minor, and seventh. And proceeding through history. All right. And the Greek modes, 
uh, again, it's a major bass system. In the major minor key system, it's minor bass, minor chord bass, you could say. And finally, dominant seventh bass for the blues. Why? Because for the first time in history, the 5 7 can act as a chord that you can rest on rather than it going somewhere. Now, you could say, if you want to nitpick, you could say there are some classical pieces and even some pop music pieces where you end on the 5 7 chord. However, there's no sense of uh, resolution there. You're left hanging in the air. I'll give the example. Um, there's a song by the Beatles called For No One. The day, the day it breaks, your mind aches. There will be times when all the things she said will fill you in. Oh, wait, wait, I got the wrong key. Uh, we're in the key of C. The day breaks, your mind aches. And we want to go home to C. All right. So in that case, the five chord is leaving us hanging. So therefore, it's not acting as a one, even though we're ending the song with it. That's for a special effect, and and in that particular song, it's perfect because it's it's uh, it's about the longing and the emptiness of uh, living with someone who used to love you who doesn't love you anymore, and you know that, and you want her back but you can't get her, and so there's that hanging feeling of no resolution to the situation. Brilliant move on Paul McCartney's part with that song. All right, but you notice. Um, We want so much to go, right? But in the case of the blues, I'll use that same G7 chord. And we feel a sense of resolution there. Strange, isn't it? We don't want, we don't hear it going like, all right. We're actually hearing that G7 chord as home. All right, we've reached our gravity point. Um, I think it's amazing that when we proceed through the three systems, it happens as a historical phenomenon, and we proceed from the major chord to the minor chord to the seventh chord, and those three systems, each one serving as a one chord in the different systems. That blows my mind that it actually progressed that way. And now, um, I think I've said this in my last lecture that the blues is at once the most easy, most simplest form to improvise through. And at the same time, it's the most uh, sophisticated form by virtue of the fact that it's ruled by five, seven chords, all right, in different positions. Um, all right, so when we look at the chord family template of a key, and I've shown you how to do this on guitar uh, in the major minor key system lectures. Uh, this is a chord family template using bar chords. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're omitting the seventh step. Uh, I've talked about that over and over again. That loses its identity within the key, and it's more related to the uh, five, seven of the key. But here I am in the key of G. I've got one, two, three, four, five, which is naturally dominant seven and six. Well, the blues is based on one, four, and five. If you were to do that one, four, five strictly within the confines of the major minor key system, we get G major, C major, and D seven. But the radical thing that the blues did was they turned the one chord into a dominant seven and the four chord into a dominant seven. So now we have one, four, and five, all dominant sevens. Now, when we translate that idea back to the Greek modes, in a sense, you could say, G7, the one chord, is stating the key of C because G7 is the 5-7 of the key of C. C7 is stating the key of F because C7 is the 5 chord of the key of F. And in the blues, C7 is the 4 chord, 1-4. And finally, uh, D7 is uh, stating the G, uh, the key of G. So this is where the complexity lies because you're blending and amalgamating 
keys together into one kind of blob of sound that uh, blob is not a good word. Uh, let's call it a gumbo because uh, at least that's appetizing and uh, the blues is awesome. So I don't want to call it a blob of blues. Um, all right. So anyway, the, you know, I'm surprised I'm going on for this long. Really, the simple idea here is just simply this G7 is acting as our resting chord. That's it. OK, uh, this this is totally radical. OK, there is no one key in the in terms of thinking in the major minor key system or the Greek modes. It doesn't matter which of those two systems. There is no one key that houses a one dominant seven, a four dominant seven and a five dominant seven within it. You have to go to three different keys to find those chords. OK, um, granted, in the major minor key system, if I was in G melodic minor, the one this is kind of interesting because the, the blues is somehow in a very strange way related to harmonic and melodic minor keys. And uh, I, I it's kind of mind boggling that blues happened so many hundreds of years later. And somehow it's related to this innovation from the 1700s. But if we took the one, four, five of G, G melodic minor, one would be G minor, four would be C7, and five would be D7. So we have the four and five as dominant sevens. Now, here's an interesting thing. The one is not dominant seven, but we play a G minor pentatonic in the blues and a G blues. So in a sense, you could say, well, that's the minor scale, and we have the two chords from the melodic minor. So the blues is somehow strange, strangely related to melodic minor. Only different being, only difference being that the one chord is not minor in the blues; it's dominant seventh. However, we're playing that minor scale against it. All right. Don't get stuck on. Look, the easy way to play the blues. If I'm doing the play a twelve bar blues, and by the way, I'll give a uh, I'll give out the, the actual structure and bones of a, of a classic 12-bar blues. They taught us this in college. It became the tradition. And if you were to listen to an old, like one of the, like in our, uh, in our city here, uh, the jazz station on Sundays has an all blues day on Sundays. And you will hear this particular form over and over and over again, the 12-bar blues form, which I will show you. There are variants. And I'll tell you this much. Since... One dominant seven and four dominant seven are really the earmarks of blues. You don't have to play uh, the 12 bar blues in order to get a bluesy sound. All you need to do is use those two chords and that's enough to be bluesy and to play blues style against that, meaning minor against the dominant seven. So if I just go, that's enough to suggest the blues right there. You don't need the 12 bar blues. The 12 bar blues is a, a tradition and a template that works and it just evolved itself organically, which is amazing unto itself. Uh, I suppose that's all I could say right now. I don't want to touch too, more, uh, too much on the four dominant seven because that's one of the separate blues clues. So we're saying today one dominant seven as a root and that's that. Um, I don't think there's anything else much I could say about it. When we get to the sharp nine uh, as uh, one of the blues clues, I'm going to explain how that works within the context of the one and the five seven of the um, of the blues. But really, I'm kind of blathering. I could have gotten on and done a five second video saying the one chord of the blues is a seventh chord. See you later. All right. Anyway, see you later. <laughs>